Tonight, we hear from Meath School District parents as a new bill mandating sex education for students as young as kindergarten inches closer to becoming law in Washington. Plus, the latest coronavirus numbers here in the state with more people in Spokane County now being tested for the virus. Rain starting tonight and that continues all the way through the weekend. I'm tracking not only rain, but possibly some snow chances to mix in. And good evening to you. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Regina on a new sex education bill in Washington is sparking some controversy. Senate Bill 5395 would go into place next school year and bring the curriculum to students in grades K through 12. Krem 2's Brandon Jones spoke with parents who say they're uncomfortable with this decision. Well, organizers told me they counted over 100 people who showed up here tonight and voiced their concerns about this new bill. They say the lessons that are going to be required with the passing of it just aren't age appropriate for the students learning. And that that just might potentially be bad. Anise Barker was the leading voice in a meeting that spoke out against Senate Bill 5395. She says as a mother, she traveled to Olympia for the bill's hearing and she's simply not comfortable with the curriculum that'll be taught. So what she's done now is put together a slideshow of things that may be taught and is encouraging parents to question what their students will learn. The more I talk to people who are in my friend's circle and in my community, most of them didn't know what this bill was. Most schools in Washington have some form of sexual education, but the new bill would make it a requirement for all public schools in the state to go over material in each grade. We get an STD lesson in seventh grade. We get to talk about the risks of different sexual behaviors. The new bill does allow parents to withhold their student from taking any of the courses. They could opt their children out at the beginning of each year. Thinking about our things about how to recognize and how to resist abusive and coercive behavior. From Mead, Brandon Jones, Crim2 News. And tonight we continue our work separating facts from fear about the coronavirus to show you there's no need to panic. Right now, two people are currently under investigation for the novel coronavirus in Spokane County. Both are in isolation until the results are ready. We don't know how long it will take to get those results. Right now, there are no cases of coronavirus in Spokane County. However, 12 people have died in Washington from the novel coronavirus and another 68 people have tested positive. 10 people in total died in King County and one person died in Snohomish County. 58 people have tested positive in King County, 19 in Snohomish County, one in Jefferson County and one in Grant County. Pierce County announced their first coronavirus case this evening. Earlier today, one person in Okanagan County was being tested for that virus bringing that total number of cases in Washington to 80, the most of any state in the U.S. Well, Eastern Washington University is planning for the immediate return of students studying abroad. The university is also canceling any university-sponsored travel for faculty and staff to China, Iran, Italy, South Korea, and Japan until further notice. Eastern also asked faculty to consider holding final exams remotely instead of in person. The university will also hire 10 to 12 temporary custodians and purchase specialized cleaning equipment and supplies. Well, results from a Gonzaga community member have come back negative for the coronavirus. The person was in self-isolation while waiting for those results. It's still unclear if the person is a student or a staff member, but again, their results came back negative. There are currently no confirmed cases in Spokane County. Again, now the person tested for coronavirus in Colville has also tested negative. In Grant County, there have been two people tested for the virus. One test came back negative and the other was positive. Several health care workers involved in treating one of the patients are in quarantine as a precaution. Well, new tonight, two people have died from the coronavirus in Florida. This now brings the death total to 17 in the U.S. Meanwhile, Utah announced the first confirmed case of the novel coronavirus. An official saying the patient is believed to have been exposed to the virus aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship. You may remember that cruise ship was the site of the largest coronavirus quarantine where more than 600 people were infected. Now around the country, more than 330 cases have been confirmed. John Hopkins University announced that more than 100,000 people have been infected worldwide. 
And to combat coronavirus, President Trump today signing an $8.3 billion spending package. It passed Congress with bipartisan support and includes funds for vaccine research and development, as well as helping state and local government. Uh, I want to note, uh, we know that we have real concerns about long-term uh, long care facilities, and we are standing up an incident command uh, specifically dedicated to assisting long-term care facilities. We know that the, the first potential victims of this virus are our elderly and those who are medically compromised. Today, Governor Jay Inslee says federal coronavirus funding will benefit the state of Washington. He also says the state is setting up a separate incident response team to deal with coronavirus prevention and response in long-term care facilities. The state will be sent $11.5 million from the federal government. Some of that money will go to compensating Washington for the money already spent on the coronavirus. That's about $2.5 million. The rest of the money will be spent on lab testing, infection control, and and contact tracing. Inslee also says the federal government will be replenishing the state of Washington store of medical supplies. While we're focusing on facts, not fear, about the coronavirus, we've been receiving a lot of questions from you about your concerns. You can find the latest information by texting FACTS to 509-448-2000. Well, we finally made it to Friday. It's the end of the week. It was a nice one with Thomas Patrick. We're expecting some wet weather for the weekend, right? Yeah, and it's already begun to move in tonight. So some light rain through the overnight hours that will continue basically all the way through Saturday morning. This is what Doppler radar is showing right now. You see that development over the past four to six hours, and it should be lightly raining across the Spokane area, though I will admit uh, I've been anchored down in the weather center the past couple hours here. A little bit of some heavier precipitation above the Sprague area, just off to the north there. But even if you look to the valleys to the north, like Sandpoint, Bonner, Ferry, Newport area, Chihuahua still seeing rain. So you see that Valley rain mountain split at the moment and our temperatures will largely stay pretty mild overnight. Our computer model has 40 for the low in Spokane. I think it'll get a little bit colder than that, so to speak. Some of the heaviest hit areas already, the Tri-Cities, that's the Pasco area, the Blue Bridge that has seen some uh, heavier rain at the moment. Snow quality pass, the heaviest snow, at least one car light off in the distance uh, is uh, all we can see at the moment. And our future tracker does keep that wet trend all the way through tomorrow morning, but some areas will see that snow mixing in. So coming up, I'll detail who has the best chance to see perhaps some light accumulations on some grassy surfaces come tomorrow morning. All right, doesn't look too bad. Thomas, thank you so much for that. Well, coming up here, police train to respond to any number of situations from property crime to violent crime, and now they're training to recognize any biases they may have. We'll show you that coming up next. I'm Billy Bush. Next extra, Hannah or Madison? It is down to the final two on The Bachelor. I definitely found love. Pilot Pete drops one clue after another for our ultimate finale sneak peek. Next extra. Tonight on CW22. Crim 2 News is sponsored by the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine. Hey everyone, Alika here, and this is the Huckleberry South Wall. And this Saturday, everything on the South Wall is 20% off. All of your favorites, from the scratch-made bistro and juice bar, to hand-rolled sushi, locally made desserts and breads, cheese, plus the largest olive bar in town, and our natural, organic, non-GMO meat and seafood department. Everything on the south wall is 20% off at Huckleberry's Natural Market, 926 South Monroe. Spring is in the air and creativity is blooming everywhere at Custer's 43rd Annual Spring Arts and Craft Show this weekend at the Spokane Fair and Expo Center. Join us as 300 artisans from across the Northwest display and sell their fine art, handcraft, and specialty foods. From functional to whimsical, the variety and quality of work make this a must-see event. Admission $7, kids 12 and under free. Custer's Spring Arts and Craft Show this weekend at the Spokane Fair and Expo Center. Presented by Jim Custer Enterprises. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. Well, we've got some bad news for them. We are not going to cut Social Security. We're going to expand benefits. I'm Bernie Sanders, and I approve this message. There's a beast out there. 
stalking the local woods and roads. A predator with a roar that can rip through concrete. It feeds on wet pavement, thick mud, and fresh snow. The beast needs taming. Bring home your own beast in an F-150 Northwest edition with 14,639 total value plus 754 credit bonus cash plus 500 on top of your trade. But act now. This deal is every bit as elusive as the beast itself. Today, there's an invisible line that divides those who can access the internet at home and those who can't. I call for internet, and the cable guy says, no can do, you're in the middle of nowhere. Well, to us, this isn't nowhere. This is home. We want the same things as everybody else. I want to video chat my brother overseas, pay bills online. I want to order tractor parts. This farm's not just my business, it's our life. And I need the internet to run it. At Biosat, we believe reliable internet for all isn't just important, it's essential. That's why we're on a mission to erase that line by making satellite internet available to everyone, no matter where you live. Get Viasat satellite internet for your home or business with speeds up to three times faster than DSL. Call 888-402-0172 and save up to $150. There's electricity in the air. It's powerful. It's captivating. It's shocking. The shock are back and only on Spokane CW22. Welcome back. Lori Vallow, the mother of two missing Rexburg kids, made her first appearance in an Idaho courtroom this afternoon. J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan haven't been seen since September. Misty Inglet from our Boise sister station has been in the courtroom all day with this story. Guys, there's a lot of heavy interest, lots of heavy interest in this case here, guys, in Rexburg. They even had to turn some people away from the courthouse today because both the main and overflow courtrooms were full as a lot of people, both media and the general public, turned out to see Lori Vallow and see if any answers might surface about where JJ and Tylee are. The first matter of business discussed in the courtroom today is the judge asked Lori whether she wanted to go by Vallow or Daybell, to which she responded, Mrs. Daybell. Also discussed in court today, the main discussion was the bail amount. After hearing arguments from both prosecution and defense, the judge decided to lower bail from $5 million down to $1 million. The judge reasoned that because Lori had disobeyed a court order to physically produce her children to authorities in Idaho, that was still technically an outstanding court order. So he set the bail higher than the defense's request of $10,000. Right after the hearing, JJ's grandparents spoke, saying they weren't really surprised by anything that happened in court today, and added, it's not about what the judicial system does or doesn't do to Lori, it's all about JJ and Tylee. It's not whether I like Lori, it's not whether I like Chad. This is about finding two children. I want everybody, please, to keep that in mind in everything we do. Now, Larry added that JJ and Tylee both would be welcome in their home and they could live with them if, if and when they are found. As for Lori, she is scheduled to be back in court for a preliminary hearing in about two weeks from now on March 18th and 19th. Reporting live in Rexburg tonight, I'm Misty Inglet. I'll send it back to you. We all have biases, you know, we need to deal with it. But those biases are a product of a lifetime. Now that's Stephen James, an assistant professor at WSU Spokane. He's talking about biases people have. Now, as you know, biases shape what we believe and help us make our decisions day to day, including police officers. We did get a look inside a simulator that helps officers recognize those biases. What we found was across the board that when the actor on screen, for example, was African-American, there was a greater threat response internally from the subjects that we brought in, even if that subject was African-American themselves. And officers were also more likely to draw their weapons quicker, but not necessarily pull the trigger. This type of training became top of mind for many departments across the nation after the 2014 shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. Spokane Police offers their own training, but many officers choose to use the one at WSU to specifically identify the biases that they have. 
Well, last night, holding up red hand prints was a coordinated effort between the Welpinit and in Chile, girls basketball team. Sorry about that. Welpinit head coach TJ Flett says he is immensely proud of his team for doing this. This was a big game for both communities. Because of that, they decided to take a stand together in front of the crowd at the Spokane Arena for all missing and murdered indigenous women. Well, head coach TJ Flett says it felt good that both communities, even though we're battling it out on the court, came together in that moment to show that they were together and to stand strong. He says zero was the goal. We don't want any more missing sisters. Well, we're tracking a little bit of wet weather overnight into the weekend. Thomas Patrick is here with your weekend forecast. Stay with us. We'll be right back. CREM2 News is sponsored by Palo Windows. The gamma knife icon is able to spare normal brain tissue better than any other radiation machine. It made sense for us to bring in the very best that gamma knife has to our region and community. You can avoid some of the long-term effects of radiating healthy brain tissue by using gamma knife. It not only is a better treatment, more accurate treatment, it's faster. Whatever you were doing the day before you had your treatment, you can continue the next day. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet. With great deals, get ready to turn your dreams into reality. Right now, you can lease a new 2020 Tacoma for just $269 a month or get $1,500 customer cash on a new 2020 Tacoma. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Lucky You is back. The $600,000 Lucky You jackpot frenzy at Coeur d'Alene Casino. 12 jackpots, each guaranteed to hit by $60,000. Attention, attention. The fifth Lucky You jackpot just hit. Want to win the next big jackpot? There are still seven jackpots left. Hurry on down to Coeur d'Alene Casino. Why would you play anywhere else? For all you basketball enthusiasts, madness is in the air. But for Apple ARV, March is the season of RV madness. The largest liquidation of the year for all remaining 2019 inventory. 30, 40, even 50% off all remaining 2019 RVs. With many units being sold way below dealer cost. Brand new 21-foot bunkhouse travel trailers with slides starting at $14,995. New toy haulers starting at $17,995. New fully loaded luxury fifth wheel starting at under 30 grand. And brand new motorhome starting at just $59,995. There's a reason Appleway is the number one RV superstore in the entire Northwest. Appleway RV. 19605 East Cataldo Avenue in Liberty Lake. Just off I 90 at the Parker Road exit. Krim's News to Know email newsletter helps you get ready for the day ahead. Welcome back. This is my favorite part of the show. We get to talk about weather with meteorologist Thomas Patrick it's my here favorite with me. Part of the show too. <laughs> is it? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to see. I learned a lot over commercial break that some of the snow that we may get tomorrow might not be sticking Probably around. Probably not going to stick. I mean, okay. th think about it. It was in the 50s today and yeah. yesterday, and I think one or two of the days before that. So the ground is really warm. Is. So it if is. we get this like above freezing rain, it's going to be really hard pressed to stick but it might in a few spots. And I think that'll be the challenge of our forecast is seeing what areas get the most snow or what areas of grass get the most snow, I should say, overall. A cloudy day today across Coeur d'Alene, and now those clouds are giving way to some rainfall, at least one band of rain moving through in the late evening hours for tonight. Let's zoom into the Deer Park area. A little bit of some heavier rain falling right now between Deer Park and Colbert's and just off to the north there. And even if you look at the valleys to the north, like the Sandpoint area, still raining, but you see the mountains 
mountains in between that are all pretty much highlighted in blue. So it's a valley rain mountain snow split at the moment, but it might get cold enough to start squeezing out some snowflakes even in our area cities for tomorrow morning. This is what the timing part of the forecast looks like. Basically rain solid through the morning hours with that snow trying to squeeze in. But here's the thing. This is not a snowstorm for tomorrow. It's just snow mixing in to the rainfall. So it, we might get those big wet snowflakes, but it's going to be hard pressed to stick to the ground. Now some areas at least have a small chance for some snow. That's all the green that you see on the map here, but a couple areas that are highlighted in yellow give these areas a moderate chance to at least see some snowfall. It might not stick all that much, but this area of the Palouse from Pullman, Moscow through uh, Colfax, Steptoe, Rosalia, Tico all have a good chance to see that snow fall. And if it does, it probably doesn't stick to the road, but it probably sticks to the grass, sticks to your car if it's not been turned on recently. That's the kind of snow that we'll be looking for tomorrow morning. It'll be very hard to measure across the area. So here's future tracker 6 a.m. In fact, most areas might still be seeing rain at that time, but it's the coldest right in the morning, right around sunrise and between 6 a.m. and the 10 a.m. hour. That's where we start to see that snow popping up and developing across the area. So here's the Palouse, same area that has a good chance for snow and most North Idaho locations like St. Mary's, even uh, areas east of Coeur d'Alene. These are the best locations for that snow to fall or at least mix into the rain, but it's not really going to stick. So not expecting it to be an icy kind of drive anywhere. By the afternoon hours, this will all be tapering off pretty quickly, leaving us with a much better Sunday on tap. So some quick weather notes and to recap light snow accumulations. If anything, just on the grassy surfaces, larger accumulations above 3500 feet. So if you do have to travel over the mountain passes like over Snoqualmie or Lookout, you will be looking for some snow driving in the elevations. All that is just tomorrow. As for the rest of the seven day forecast, much nicer, much more pleasant. Temperatures do recover back into the mid 50s by Wednesday of next week. March is colorectal cancer awareness month. Did you know that one in four people have precancerous polyps, which can easily be removed during a colonoscopy? Visit us at SpokaneDigestive.com to learn more. With over 75 years of savings and service, GEICO is the easy choice. We can even help you with home on it. Oh, not again. <clears throat> oh, thanks. You know, automated lights are just the beginning. Pretty soon they're going to have eyes everywhere. Well, good night. GEICO, over 75 years of savings and service. Hi there. It's Les Schwab Alignment and Brakes and Shocks and Wheels and Tires. Now, some tire places don't offer all that, but we do to help keep you and your family safe. And during the Les Schwab Spring Tire Sale, save up to $80 on a set of four select tires. Stop by or book an appointment at leschwab.com. Les Schwab Tires. Doing the right thing since 1952. Attention, victims diagnosed with asbestosis, lung cancer, or mesothelioma, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Keller, Fishback & Jackson is a law firm that helps asbestos victims and their families and has decades of experience in asbestos litigation, recovering millions of dollars for military veterans, construction workers, workers at refineries, and other industrial sites. If you suffer from mesothelioma, asbestosis, or lung cancer, call 866-LAW-FOR-YOU. 866-LAW-FOR-YOU. I suffered with psoriasis for so long. I felt gross. People were afraid I was contagious. I was covered from head to toe. I was afraid to show my skin. It was kind of a shock after I started Cosentex. I wasn't covered anymore. Four years clear. Five years now. I just look and feel better. See me. Cosentix works fast to give you clear skin that can last. Real people with psoriasis look and feel better with Cosentix. Don't use if you're allergic to Cosentix. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. An increased risk of infections and lowered ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about an infection or symptoms. If your inflammatory bowel disease symptoms develop or worsen, or if you've had a vaccine or plan to, serious allergic reactions may occur. I look and feel better with Cosentix. Five years is just crazy. See me. Ask your dermatologist if Cosentix could help you move past the pain of psoriasis. 
We're celebrating our 74th anniversary with the introduction of Walnut Grove, made from solid American black walnut, offering modern design and the stickly trademark of sophisticated handwork. The entire collection is being offered at low introductory pricing. This includes all Walnut Grove bedroom, living, and dining. This factory authorized sale from Stickley is our best anniversary event ever. Stop by Ennis of Spokane and save on Stickley's newest collection, Walnut Grove. Now, your Northern Quest Sports Desk. Welcome back. We are starting in Tacoma in the 4A state tournament as both Central Valley teams were in the semis tonight. Central Valley boys taking on the best team in the tournament according to the RPI Union. 340 in the fourth. Union's Tanner Toulson with authority. Central Valley's lead only at three, but they respond from there. Jay Simmons with the steal and this sick Euro step. 53-46 Bears. The long outlet pass off the rebound seals it. 4CV, Noah Sanders with the exclamation point. Central Valley wins 63-55. They're headed to their first state championship game since 2012. Central Valley girls also playing Union. The only difference is that the CV ladies are seated higher. First half, Peyton Howard drives into the lane. She had nine points in the half and led CV with 18 overall. Then Howard dishes to Grace Gildian, who had 12. MJ Bruno with the off-balance layup before the break. CV would lead by nine at the half and never trail after that, winning 61-53. So yes, both CV teams headed to the championship. What a dynasty for the ladies in Spokane Valley. Bears are headed back to the state championship for the third time in five years. Now we head to the Idaho 5A tournament where Post Falls was looking to advance to the finals. Uh, they fell in this round at the state tournament last year. The Trojans opponent tonight, Rocky Mountain, was the top ranked team in the state. Now uh, Post Falls, they went on a nice 9-0 run to end out that first half. And they would not trail after that. Great shot by uh, Cole Rutherford there, by the way. Post Falls hands Rocky Mountain their first loss to a team from Idaho this season, advancing to the championship 73-66. Moscow boys facing Kuna in the 4A semis. 4A semis. Moscow led by 24 at one point in the third quarter, but they did everything they could to drop this baby at the end. Lots of missed free throws. Kuna's Sean Austin lays it in with 35 seconds to go to bring it to a 60-55 Moscow lead. So then he hits the deep three to make it 61-58 Bears. So Braden Decker on the line with eight seconds to go gives Moscow a 62-60 lead here. Then this free throw is key, makes it 63-60. Austin would have a shot at a three to tie it, but it doesn't fall. Kuna would airball another three at the buzzer. Moscow survives 63 to 60. In the two-way tournament, Westside thumps St. Mary's. They head to the third place game. West Valley girls won their game last night with with a shot at 0.6 seconds left. Guess what? Tonight's game against Tumwater equally thrilling. Third quarter, Eagle Town six. Madison Mullaney cuts the lead in half. Less than a minute in the game, Tumwater takes a 40 to 38 lead after a pair of free throws, but off the inbounds pass, West Valley's Jillian Taylor wastes no time, lays it up and in to tie the game at 40. Seconds to go, Haley Marlowe puts up the th three and it is good. It left me speechless, what can I say? Just before the horn, West Valley wins in another late second half comeback, 43 to 40. The Eagles will face Lyndon Christian tomorrow night for the 2A crown. We'll have State B highlights after the break. Slam dunk a deal at Dave Smith Motors. Shop over 2,000 new Ram trucks online at DaveSmith.com. Save up to $16,000 off new Ram trucks during Ram Truck Month. Shop us and see why we are the world's largest Jeep Ram dealer. DaveSmith.com. When I went to Aspen Dental, they asked me, what's wrong? And I go, I had rotting teeth in my mouth. My fiance hadn't seen me smile in 10 years. I have a child on the way here in the next five months. I would like to be able to smile in his first picture when he's born. They said, we can do that. If I would have known that I was going to be 50 times happier with dentures, I would have fixed it before. At Aspen Dental, we're all about yes. Like yes, dentures start at $3.99 per arch. And yes to a 90-day denture money back guarantee. Don't wait. Book at AspenDental.com or call today. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet. With great deals, get ready to turn your dreams into reality. Right now, you can lease a new 2020 4Runner for $319 a month. Plus, every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan with roadside assistance. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Hi, I'm Ron. 
And I'm Shelly. At Rosenberger Construction, we build some of the most beautiful custom homes in North Idaho. Like our spectacular spec home now for sale at the club at Rock Creek, Coeur d'Alene's newest private golf course filled with stunning natural beauty. Our custom homes are furnished and designed with you in mind. For our clients looking for that unique, one-of-a-kind piece of furniture, we always recommend Consign Furniture in Liberty Lake. From great rooms to dining rooms to master suites, Consign Furniture is sure to turn any house into a home. Where can you see the hottest new laundry set on the market? Fred's Appliance. The new GE Front Load Laundry Set is the first and only front load washer vented so it has absolutely no odor. This is kind of a big deal. Fill the detergent once and you're set for the next 32 loads of laundry. With built-in Wi-Fi, you can stop or start your family size laundry set anywhere. Wash and dry small loads in one cycle with the one-step wash and dry cycle. Get your new laundry set today at Fred's Appliance. Slam dunk a deal at Dave Smith Motors. Shop over 2,000 new Ram trucks online at DaveSmith.com. Save up to $16,000 off new Ram trucks during Ram Truck Month. Shop us and see why we are the world's largest Jeep Ram dealer. DaveSmith.com. Welcome back. We now head down to Spokane Arena for the State B Tournament. A nice little David and Goliath matchup in the 2B Girls Semis. The tournament favorite in Liberty against 14th seeded Northwest Christian. The Lancers took control in the first half. Macy Burnham doing what she does. She's a walking bucket. Then how about this sequence from Alina Cook? A block shot. Then goes, gets the ball, pulls out her do-it-herself kit, finishes on the other end. Liberty got up by double digits in the first half. Second half, more Burnham and one after getting her own rebound. She had 29 points. Lancers cruised to a 64-44 win back to the state title game where they lost last season. They're looking to change that this year. Ever since the beginning of this year, this summer, we've been grinding for this point and to be back and all of our hard work working up to this. Uh, we knew this was always a goal and we've been just grinding to get here and so it's great. Odessa boys barely got a win over ACH yesterday, turning the page to Nacelle this afternoon. We pick it up in the fourth quarter, under three to play. Nacelle down five and with the ball, Colby Glynn will hoist one from way downtown. Nothing but net. The lead was down to two. State scoring champ Ryan Moffitt was held in check all day with just five points. But the other Tigers picked up the slack. Marcus King drains a mid-range shot from the baseline, and the lead was back up to four. Then with just under 10 seconds left, King at the line, looking to ice it with a couple of free throws. He misses the second, but Tim DeWolf is there to clean it up as he had a team-high 14 points. The place goes bananas. Odessa into the state title game with a 62-56 win. I, it, I, I've never done it in basketball. This feels awesome. Like It's a dream come true. I mean, I, we've worked so hard. This is literally the dream. I, it's awesome. One more game. All local matchup in the 1B girls semis between Oaksdale and Pomeroy. We pick it up with about 90 seconds left to play. Oaksdale up one and the Nighthawks get a huge bucket from one of their four freshmen. Jesse Reed with the take high off the glass. Nighthawks led by three. Pomeroy comes right back. Maddie Dixon double team finds Keeley Mavs. Pirates back within one. Five seconds to go now. Pirates at the line but down by three. Sydney Watko misses the free throw but the ensuing rebound leads to a jump ball and Pomeroy has another shot. Just over three seconds left. The Pirates get it in and get a pretty good look, but it's off the rim. No good. Oaksdale pulls off the upset over Pomeroy, 37-34. It would mean so much. Um, we are just super excited, and we know that we have to show up tomorrow. we got to play our good defense, and we just got to do what we do. Potlatch in the 1A D1 semi down in Boise playing Ambrose. The Loggers would trail 24 to 9 at half, but Potlatch would storm back. Tyler Wilcoxon gets his to go. We're heading to overtime tied at 37. In OT, 90 seconds left. Paul Yanor's shot is good. 39 37 Ambrose. Last chance for Potlatch. Tyler Wilcoxon air balls a three for the win. Ambrose only needed one shot to win it in OT. Potlatch falls 39 37. For the second straight season, Grace hands Lapway an L in the state semis for the First time since 2004, there will be no White Pine League team in a state title game. Outside of the State B Tournament, Whitworth playing Letourneau in the NCAA D3 Tournament first round. We take you to the final seconds, tied at 86. Lewis and Clark alum Isaiah Hernandez dribbles down the floor, pulls up for the runner. It's in with one and a half seconds to go. Letourneau made a furious comeback in this game, but Whitworth holds on to advance 88-86. Whitworth will play on Saturday in the next round of the D3 tournament. That is going to be a really fun one to watch. Of course, there's a lot more highlights coming your way at 11 o'clock as we have four local teams in 9 o'clock games. We'll see you then.